In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. I'm Father Philip Smith, and I'm giving a homily on the readings for Corpus Christi, the 6th of June, in year B of the Catholic cycle. As always, I ask you, if you have a missal, to look at those readings and read them prayerfully, that you may get quite a lot out of them that I don't mention. But here are my thoughts. The readings, by the way, uh, are, start from the book of Exodus, where uh, Moses, uh, as it were, ratifies, uh, uh, Moses speaks about the great treaty or covenant that the Lord is making with uh, the Hebrew people. And there's lots of immolation and slaughter of bullocks, sacrifices, to, as a sign of this great treaty or covenant that has been made. God takes his people into his care, his adopted people. They, on their part, carry out the rules set down by God. The second reading is from the book of Hebrews. Christ has come to be the high priest of the new covenant made by the Lord. And he is going to sacrifice not bulls or whatever, but himself. And he's going to restore holiness to people's lives, wholeness to people's lives. He's going to offer himself in the sacrifice. It's his blood. His death will cancel the sins that infringed the earlier covenant, which was not obeyed very well. Then, the gospel. The gospel uh, speaks about from Mark, speaks about the day of the Passover and what Jesus did at his adapted Passover ceremony, a very ancient ceremony central to the Jewish year. He offered himself. He gave bread and blessed it, broke it. Then he said, This is the cup of my body. This is my blood, the blood of the covenant, which is to be poured out for many. You read the readings yourself, but quite clearly this year the emphasis in Corpus Christi in the readings is about blood and sacrifice. We celebrate and give thanks for Jesus' self-sacrifice for us and for the cancellation of sins that we hear in the second reading. And he did this by the shedding of his blood. In other years, we concentrate on other aspects of the Eucharist, on this feast of Corpus Christi, the body of Christ, or we should say the body and blood of Christ. We concentrate in other years on the aspect of bread, of a meal. Jesus gives himself as spiritual food for our community that binds us together. But let's not miss out the blood, the sacrifice, the cancellation of sin, when we think about those headings. Jesus is quite clear that he sacrifices himself. There's no way of getting around it. He gives us his very self, his lifeblood, in a sacramental way, in the consecrated wine. We call this the blood of Christ after the consecration. It's a self-sacrifice because, first of all, he adapts the Passover meal, which has at its centre a sacrifice, 
a lamb is sacrificed and eaten as a centre. Where is the lamb in the Last Supper? There was none. Jesus, therefore, substitutes himself for the missing lamb. He went to Gethsemane immediately after, then was taken, tried, led to crucifixion. He was the lamb. That is why we say just before communion, Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world. We thank God that he is faithful to us at such great cost. And it's also sacrifice, of course, by the very words that our Lord uses in the gospel. He says, then Jesus took a cup and said, this is my blood, the blood of the covenant, which is to be poured out for many. By the way, many means everybody in Jewish terms, for all of us, poured out for all of us. And just as an aside, blood is very significant. We remember the importance of blood for life. When somebody is badly injured, for example, they're given blood transfusions. This blood literally gives them life. So Jesus pours out his blood on the cross in sacrifice so that we may have, as it were, a transfusion of his lifeblood. But Jesus is God eternal. His body that we receive is the risen eternal body. We get in the precious blood a transfusion of everlasting life from this resurrection blood. You might, by the way, as an aside, um, think of the fact that the chalice has been withdrawn for the people during the time of Covid because it might pass on infection. But the priest always takes the chalice for the validity of the Mass. When doing so, of course, he drinks the blood of Christ on behalf of the whole body assembled in the church. You take part, but very spiritually. We hope that the chalice will be restored in due course when it's safe. This raises the next question. What was the motive for this sacrifice? God, through Jesus, sacrifices himself for us because, first of all, sin. We don't like to think of sin today. Some people say it doesn't exist, but it does. Sin is everything that damages our relationship with God and our neighbour. Sin can be an evil act, a breaking of a commandment, which isolates us from God or our neighbour. Or it can just be that tendency within us, we want to do the good, but so often end up doing what is not good. There's something sort of cussed in our nature. That's sin. And it can also be actions that give us a false sense of independence from God and dull our care of neighbour. In this comfortable time, uh, we've there are many things that can uh, dull our spiritual sense. These are sinful. Placing excessive security in comfort, in material possessions, in money, or self-centeredness that imagines that we can live the world as if we're not interdependent, as well as more obvious sins and all sorts of layers of sin. And the fact is, we can't mend broken relationships with our neighbour by ourselves in a fractured world. All human arrangements on their own are liable to break. We can't, uh, for example, do away with distrust, envy, self-interest, malice 
and the like. They all damage relationships with each other. We can't reconnect broken relationships with God ourselves. We need God's sacrifice, that is, his stooping down to us, because we can't reach God as little as we can touch the sky. So God, of course, becomes man to lift us up to heaven. I saw a touching picture of a daddy with a little daughter, tiny little child. When the little child was tired of seeing everything at her own level, all she did was put her arms up, utter trust like that, to dad. And he lifted her on his shoulders. We can't get to God, but God can lift us up to himself. These are the reasons for sacrifice. So this sacrifice of Jesus reconnected us to God and neighbour by cancelling sins, as the second reading says, where relations have been damaged by sin. This gives us a new start with God, with neighbour. And we remember that God does this because he's a loving parent. A parent will sacrifice themselves for the good of their children. I mean, we can only imagine a situation where perhaps uh, a youngster gets into money problems at college and piles up credit card debt. The child's parent pay off their debts so that the child may start again, hopefully learning the lesson. That's the sort of things parents do, loving parents do. That's what God does as we're in a fix. And only God has the power to reconnect us by forgiving sins. There was a tragic story of a, a child who was blinded when a rubber bullet struck the bridge of the nose of the child. The father asked the surgeon, I will give my own eyes to my child so that he may see again. What a sacrifice. Greatly moved, the surgeon said that was impossible, it wouldn't work. But such an extravagant sacrifice is not impossible to God. He need only empty himself of his supreme power, take on a human body to do it. God in human nature sacrifices itself so that we may reach God. The result was Jesus, by his blood sacrifice, cancelled the breakup effect of our sins. And when Jesus comes to us in the Eucharist, he is saying, I am here for you. Your spiritual debts, your sins have all been cancelled. You're free to come to me and to the Father. Rely on me. Reach up to me as a little child and I will take you in my arms. I will hold you forever. I love you. Come to me. The Mass for Corpus Christi will be broadcasted at 11am on Sunday and, uh, though not broadcasted, after the 9 o'clock Mass at Grange in the Kent Estuary Catholic Churches, there will be a holy hour in honour of Corpus Christi under rather restricted conditions, followed by benediction. God bless you and keep you. Mm -hmm.